everyone. Welcome to the opening game in round nine of the Women's National Basketball League. And it's the replay of the last two Coast to Coast Cup grand finals, the Adelaide Lightning against the Melbourne Tigers. The Melbourne Tigers have never won on this court. They win those two grand finals. They really pushed Adelaide to lose both games by seven points. Can they break the ice here tonight? Well, there's a very different look to the ladder going into this game. The Adelaide Lightning have lost top spot on the ladder to the uh, Sydney Flames. 12 percentage points uh, separating first and second, having uh, both had an 8-1 record so far this season. Bulleen, Brisbane and Dandenong make up the top five. And look at the Melbourne Tigers. They're down there in eighth position on the ladder with a 3-6 and six record. Leanne Grantham joins me as usual. Leanne, uh, looking at the ladder, you'd think Melbourne no chance. But I somehow have the feeling upset in the air. Adelaide lost their unbeaten record here that had nearly lasted three years uh, to the Sydney Flames not so long back. Well, Peter, I don't think you can always look at the ladder and predict who's going to win and who's going to lose. I mean, every game is a different game. We know that it's a, a new-look Melbourne Tigers team for sure. I think where they will perhaps fall down in tonight's game is height. I think the front court of the Adelaide Lightning team is going to be a bit strong. I mean, you've got to look at Spawn. She's averaging 21 points a game and is leading the league in points per game. So she's going to be tough. I don't know who's going to stop her. It may be Burgess. It may be Guy Reese. We may see Melbourne Tigers try zone. I mean, Ray Tomlinson's a very, very smart coach, so it wouldn't surprise me if we don't see them come out and play against a zone. This Adelaide Lightning team may struggle. Well, they know, I think, what they've done to get so close in the past two grand finals, Melbourne. What have they got to do to, to step it above that? Well, I think that I'm sure that, you know, Ray would have had a look at this Adelaide team pretty closely, and he knows most of these girls very, very well. He plays an exceptionally good inside-outside game, and we see Melbourne Tigers do that you know, every time they come out onto the court and it's funny you know like Melbourne Tigers are a very very strange team to come up and play against and I mean it is a rematch of the grand mm. final so both teams will be really out there raring to win this game I mean Adelaide have lost top spot you mentioned yeah. that they want to get back up there for sure well let's look at the starting fives to start this game and for Adelaide it's as usual Michelle Brogan Carla Boyd Rachel Spawn as Leanne said leading the league career best 21 points per game so far this season Jay Kingy back at starting point guard she's recovered from the whip Lash sustained in a car accident. No fault of Jay, she hastens to mention. And Joe Hill, that fireball with her in the backcourt. For the Melbourne Tigers, uh, it's Natasha O'Brien, Cheryl Chambers, who uh, is getting more minutes this year with her new club, Melbourne. Nicole guy Rees at 189 centimetres, the tallest player in the starting five. Christy Harrower, who has played the third most minutes per game of anyone in the league this season, averaging 37 per game, playing a 100th game tonight. And with her in the backcourt, the three-point specialist, Narelle McConnell. Referees are Wayne Maidment on the left and uh, Mike Headland. And talking about three-point shooting, I think that's where Melbourne's chance lies because Cheryl Chambers and Christy Harra also shoot the threes. If they can get it, uh, say, up around 40% from beyond the arc, I think they're a chance against Adelaide, who are vulnerable at the moment. A little bit rusty this season have been the uh, Lightning. They uh, only led AIS by five points last week before they went on and win. Michelle Brogan getting herself set. Melbourne come out on court. And, of course, Natasha O'Brien has become very much a focal point for Melbourne this year. And she's playing against her old club, Adelaide, here today. And she's already scoring nine points per game, better than she did in 95. They're getting much more court time for Melbourne in 96. But it's going to be Adelaide in the blue that have the first chance to score. Hill, who often starts the game very well, comes up short there, and O'Brien gets the rebound. Christy Harrow. Here's Chambers. McConnell wanting it down on the uh, left wing. But Melbourne set up. O'Brien running into Boyd. And Boyd comes straight out on Harrow. <laughs> Doesn't give her the opportunity to look at the basket. Narelle McConnell, tough pass to make. Kingy in the way, cutting it off before O'Brien could get it. It's tough defence then by uh, Adelaide Light. We saw Carla Boyd, who's shooting the ball now, didn't drop for her, but she's going to chase that. She was actually picking up Harrower, so there's a real mismatch. Now here's Jay Kingy, who sat out that AIS game and bit of fingernails on the bench. And we see that zone I think I was talking about in the opener. We see uh, Melbourne Tigers playing a tight zone. How does Top Spawn, though, as she shoots it over? Chambers didn't really have to jump to... Uh, Get the turnaround to go there. And Adelaide take the lead through their captain. They're going to have to play very clever basketball 
Melbourne not get into foul trouble. These big players, especially Guy Rees and Burge, her back up off the bench, who seems to be fitting in more now. The uh, Tigers' way of playing. There's the drive from Christy Harrow and scores a level. She too playing against her old side. And she'll be uh, very, very determined to show this Adelaide Lightning team what she can do. She's a good player and she's very quick. Kingy, quick ball movement. Hill gets past Guy Rees, and that's a silly foul. Nicole Guy Rees just reaching out when Hill was past her. Fortunately, Hill wasn't in the motion of shooting, so she won't go to the line for two. So perhaps the foul, just a bit of a lazy foul. Guy Rees has got to move her feet a bit more. Got to cut off that baseline. Brogan, look at the difference in height there. Harrower and Brogan. Boyd, the uh, look away pass. I don't know that Brogan was expecting it. Wheeling and dealing, Chambers, good D, and a good jump there from McConnell. Sport having to get back to stop her on a trip to the basket. Harrower to Guy Rees, who ran the floor well. Good defence from Adelaide. There is a mismatch. I think you'll find that Jay King has picked up O'Brien, and they really should be looking at posting O'Brien up. Harrower finds Guy Rees, back for the three. No, that's O'Connell uh, driving and fouled. It's a travel. Well, I thought it was a foul too, but uh, certainly the travel was called by Wayne Maidman. Two points apiece. Carla Boyd to Hill. Kingy calling for it beyond the arc. There's the first three-point shot. That's a beauty. Jay Kingy takes no time to uh, get her range back. Christy Harrow calling the shots. Played every minute of that very tight game against Bulleen last week. We'll be showing you highlights of that one at halftime. Christy Harrow driving in again. Four points for Harrow. So taking it to the hole at the moment. Haven't taken a three-point shot. There's a travel on Spawn. Yes, I think Rachel just decided to, to make a move before she actually caught the ball and took a little step. So travel picked up. Melbourne Tigers back with the ball. And I think Melbourne Tigers are going to have to make every time down the floor count tonight. I'm giving it to Harrow. Now O'Brien. Brogan battling with her jump ball. No. no I think Travel, uh, is no, it? I think she actually rolled out of court with the ball, Natasha O'Brien. I think as she grabbed the ball, she pushed it out of court. So Adelaide Lightning. Lightning up by one. We've played three and a half minutes. Hill to Spawn. O'Brien has a little bit of height on that uh, matchup. Too long again was Boyd. Kingy had it and lost it. O'Connell sets O'Brien away. Harrow up. O'Connell for three. That would have done uh, the team's confidence. A lot of good it had gone down, not just O'Connell's. Great running the floor from Adelaide, and that's a good foul from O'Brien, stopping Hill again. Was certainly worth a try, Natasha O'Brien got up very well and did actually get a piece of the ball, but must have had a little bit of body contact as well. We'll pick it up here in replay. It's just a little bit of contact. Looked like on the arm, actually, of Joe Hill, so she's at the line for two free throws. Joe Hill averaging nine points per game this season. And looking very smart in the new new hairstyle she's uh, come out come out looking very glamorous well, she's tonight. 23 years of age on wednesday so uh, yeah, you can't an early yourself birthday a new birthday. hairdo for your birthday when can you and i notice that uh, rachel spawns persisting with the reddish rinse through the hair too so the adelaide hairdress is doing well at the moment <laughs> good ball movement from melbourne o'brien hasn't taken a shot yet eight seconds on the shot clock McConnell. Going to have to drive gets hard. Gets some help, Boyd, from Kingy. Oh, and Narelle McConnell in. gets the roll. It was a good drive yeah. by Narelle McConnell. And the guards are driving in for Adelaide at the moment. McConnell and Harawa. Back it comes to Brogan. Her first shot misses. Tipped down by Spawn, but only as far as Harawa. And Melbourne can take the lead. Great work from Harawa. She's fouled by Brogan and will go to the line. They're running the floor, Melbourne. Yes, they certainly are. Their transition basketball is very good. You see Dean Kingsman and Jan Sterling. You see that good penetration drive here from Christy Harrower. Not much in that call, just on the wrist of Harrower.
She certainly started this game off in fine form, Christy Harrower. Like O'Brien, averaging 13 points per game to be joint top scorers for the Tigers, who take the lead by two. And Harrower has six points. It's the middle of the keyway at this zone that Melbourne Tigers have to be careful of. It's where the height will hurt. If the ball goes inside, there's not a lot you can do to stop the shot going up. Working hard on defence, Melbourne here. But Adelaide work it free to Brogan. That's lovely ball movement from the Lightning. Nothing rusty about that. Brogan's on the board. Chambers thought about the three. Eight all. We've played five and a quarter minutes here. At the Clipsal Powerhouse in Adelaide, Harrower trying to feed it to Guy Reese. Plenty of lightning hands on it. Now they're running the floor of the Adelaide team. Hill and shoved in the back was spawned by Chambers, who acknowledges the foul. Well, better the foul then than after the shot and Rachel Spawn going for the three-point play. A lot of talk needed by Melbourne Tigers when playing his own. The baseline players really need to talk a lot. Brogan left free. Comes up short from beyond the three-point line. Spawn does that so often. Taps it back to one of the guards. Boyd for three. She's off target shooting-wise so far. Carla Boyd. Foul on Christy Harrod. Just snipping in, trying to get the hand of the ball after a rebound. Substitutions from both teams coming in. Marina Moffer and Trudy Hopwood for Adelaide. And Heather Burge for Nicole Guy Rees for Melbourne Tigers. And I understand Heather Burge went back to the United States to try out for the professional league over there. So I don't know how successful she was. Well, whatever it, that the outcome of that is, she's come back and playing much better for Melbourne. So uh, a little sojourn back her home has helped her play. Now Boyd, her first shot of the night, successful. That's one of four from Carla Boyd. And she puts the team in front. Six and a quarter minutes played here at the powerhouse. Harrower back to Burge. O'Brien for three. And that was a good look from Heather Burge. So back in front of the Melbourne Tigers. This game looking every bit as competitive as the grand finals have been in the last few years, despite the different positions on the ladder of these teams. That now travel, travel from Brogan, trying to get around the big frame of Heather Burge. I also think, Peter, that, you know, the South Australian Victorian rivalry, regardless of what club you play for, is always there. So when uh, Victorian teams come to South Australia, you can always be assured of a very tight game. Now Emma Wilson has come into the game for Narell McConnell. Number nine for the Melbourne Tigers. She peels away to the right. Trying to lead to Burge, who was leaning into Moffat. A little bit too much. Kingy's got nowhere to go there. Leading into it was uh, Wilson or O'Brien? No, it was on Wilson. Wilson. Body contact, not moving the feet. She's probably a little bit cold and perhaps a little bit nervous. Of course, Emma's father was one of the top coaches in Victoria for a long time. Carla Boyd from that inbounds. Sweet shot. And she gives her team back the lead. Four points for Carla Boyd. Cheryl Chambers now. Brogan guarding O'Brien. has kept two points so far. Burge just lost it a little bit. I think was going to... Take the shot, Harrower. Oh, that's a shooter's roll. That was uh, Chambers, it was Chambers, sorry. yes it was. That's her first basket and uh, lead changing. Great regularity, it's Melbourne's turn to be back in front. There's Brogan at the foul line. Trudy Hopgood, fouled by O'Brien. That's the second foul on Natasha O'Brien. Yes, and she really just needed to keep her feet on the ground and keep her hand straight up and down. I don't think she had any reason to try and check that shot. Trudy Hopgood was a little bit off balance anyway. Not much good O'Brien having words to the referee. It was certainly a foul. 
And already six team fouls on the Melbourne Tigers as Ray Tomlinson calls the timeout. But his team leading by one, 13-12, 12-10 to go in the first half. And then we then we go to 11 out of that. That's how it should be, okay? But we don't have people running outside. Talking about his different offenses there. 13 and well, I'm not sure. It could be defence actually. He may be uh, he may be saying let's show them that we're in a zone, but actually go into a match-up zone, which looks very similar to a man's man. I'll try and pick it up. I mean, every coach has different numbers. <laughs> There's not a book with the or, numbers written. Or colours. <laughs> Now, Trudy Hopgood at the line for the Adelaide Lightning, where she hasn't shot a free throw this season. Perhaps this one. And we see Cherie Hogg on the floor for Adelaide Lightning also, number four. Very unusual to be in round nine when uh, you get the first trip to the line. She makes uh, one of the two. And that should have the scores level at 13 apiece. It's under 12 minutes to go in the first half. Burge around Moffa. Goes back after it. Well, she's pretty good on the offensive glass. She's really working hard to get back down in the court to clog up the key. Moffa misses. Spawn, too much height around that basket. Spawn, unlucky not to get it to drop. She'll go to the line. Yeah, foul on Christy Harrow was certainly uh, a foul across the arm of Rachel Spawn. You see Boyd jumping there. Up goes Spawn. Harrow from, from behind. behind, yes. Came down across the shoulders. I think Melbourne will be very happy if Adelaide can keep shooting uh, free throws like this because... Uh, oh, well picked up by Emma Wilson. The Lightning are going to be shooting a lot of free throws, I think, in this game. Wilson making the intercept. Melbourne to take the lead back. 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Burge wanted it. Back to Chambers. Nice play. Cheryl Chambers. She's had an outstanding season. She moved from Bulleen, of course, and is seeing a, a bit more court time, but a, a lot more positive in offense. Cherie Hogg. Back on court for the Adelaide Lightning. After that emergency appendectomy of last month. Chambers guarding Boyd. And the foul on Cheryl Chambers. That's her second. So uh, to the line goes... Carla Boyd with uh, Adelaide already in the bonus situation with Melbourne's team fouls being racked up very quickly. We're not even halfway through the first half as Nikki Simpson replaces Cheryl Chambers. Well, I think that comes with uh, the height difference, Peter. Uh, you know, crashing the boards and trying to stop people from shooting. You know, you're sort of hanging off their arms rather than being up around the same height as them. So it makes it tough. Fortunately for Adelaide, Carla Boyd's shooting the foul shots just a little better than perhaps Rachel Spawn has. Well, Adelaide shot poorly from the line against the AIS. They could have ended up winning by a lot more than 17. Not for some poor free throw shooting. Well, they shooting... level up there now. Well, they're only shooting at 63%, and that's very low for free throws. Oh, nice play from Harrow. Oh. The spin move in the key way. Kelly Lemis missed the shot. Uh, foul off the ball, I think. On Trudy Hopgood. Just the second team foul though on the Lightning, so Melbourne possession from the baseline. Now a shove in the back on Wilson. Again, it's Hopgood. Just showing her authority out there. <laughs> a couple of tough fouls for Trudy Hopgood. Nikki Simpson. 
pass by Cherie Hogg. So Melbourne get another chance for this out of bounds play. And they really have to capitalise on this one. Wilson. Hogg comes out to meet Harrower. Wilson hits the three, yeah. not quite. Good and effort Lemez from Lemez. It, yes, it was a good effort. Adelaide to take the lead. Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Oh, good oh, cut from well Boyd. from uh, Boyd and spotted by her captain Spawn. Six points, uh, or seven points, is it for Boyd? It makes a lot seven. of difference when the players cut through the keyway aggressively and really want the ball, and that's what Boyd did last time. The cutting through the keyway has been a little bit soft from Adelaide. It scored the uh, last four points, though, Adelaide, and that broke a series of uh, basket for basket. Harawa. Oh, in and out. Unlucky for Harawa. Kelly Lemez, the foul. So uh, she walked the length of the court, Marina Moffer, and shoot the free throws. <laughs> Carla Boyd sits down with eight points to a name. And I don't think Ray Tomlinson was all that happy with Kelly Lamette's fouling Marina Moff. I certainly don't want to send someone like Marina Moff to the line. She's got pretty good free throw percentage. 70% this season. And they're going to have to play with the, all the court smarts they can muster Melbourne if they are to cause that upset. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the two big players from Tigers go. Guy Reese is out there with her teammate Heather Burge, so perhaps that can block up the middle just a bit more and they can get a few rebounds. And there she's getting the board. Now we talked about colours and numbers, uh, also countries. China is the call from Harrow as she comes down the court. I don't know who Zung Hai Shear is, I suppose that's Heather Burge, is it? I don't know if they can pronounce it quick <laughs> enough running down the floor. Who's the baby Huey in the uh, <laughs> Melbourne lineup? Oh, good hand, Cherie Hogg. Harrower launches three with two seconds to go on the shot clock. Birds the offensive board, where she's well up in the league this season. In fact, equal fourth. It was a good effort from Heather Birch. I think she was looking to pass the ball out, but her teammates were saying, get up there strong, and that's exactly what she did. She drew the foul on Spawn. <laughs> Now, Jan Sterling calls her first time out, but Heather Burge at the line, Adelaide up by three points. 9.16 to go in the first half. For the second half of the address. I think spacing little, seems to be what they're Well, they talking are talking about. about that, but also there seems to be a little bit of confusion about what defence are playing, and I think uh, what I said earlier after that last time out was the switch-up of defence from Melbourne's has rattled them a little bit. I think Jan Sterling wants to see them have a wing player, a 45 player, cut through the keyway, and let's see what they do if they match up. If they switch, if they stay in the zone, then we know what defence they're playing. It's a good play from Ray Tomlinson having match-up defence against Mil uh, Adelaide. It's rattled them a little bit. Burge, 56% from the line this season. Arrow gives her encouragement. She wears a heart on a sleeve, Burge. <laughs> always know what she's thinking. But perhaps uh, has cut the histrionics a little bit and is... Uh, Starting to really fit in here, but they're caught napping defensively. And Hopgood with her basket along the baseline there to give the team a five point lead. That was very sleepy defense and very well read from Trudy Hopgood. Oh, that was unlucky because I thought it may have come off Trudy Hopgood at the last minute, too. You'll never see that. <laughs> very rarely see that paid, though, do you? If the player reaches the behind and knocks it, they're usually the one that. Is adjudicated to have put it out of court. Here's Hopgood let free again. Much better passing from Adelaide Lightning. 
Move the ball quickly against his own. Good hard cuts opens up the middle. This is a 9 nothing run from the Adelaide Lightning. After a very competitive first 10 minutes from Melbourne, they can't afford to come up empty-handed, I think, on this trip down the court. McConnell. Yes. And that was needed by the Tigers. So that makes the difference five points again. They're giving it to Trudy Hopgood, and why not? Now Rachel Spore kept well away from the basket, and Burge with the rebound there. She needs some help. And that was a foul on Marina Moffa, reaching in on the arm. 15 foul on the Lightning. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Nikki Simpson sitting down for Melbourne with Nicole Guy Reese. Tasha O'Brien and Cheryl Chambers back in. They certainly need the outside shooting the Melbourne Tigers to keep them in this game. They're not going to get a lot from inside. Adelaide are just a bit too tall. Debbie Copley guarding Cheryl Chambers. O'Brien went past Moffa, out to Chambers for three. Burge battled well there to keep it alive. It's much tougher play from Burge. She was a little soft when she first got to Australia, but she certainly oh, picked up. And she's uh, picking up some assists too. Unfortunately, O'Brien couldn't make that one of them. But she's a bit of a magnet, drawing the defence, Heather Burge. She's a big body, 195 centimetres, and they needed a play to the top of her potential, Melbourne. They've lost uh, Joe Metcalf this season. De and Francesco. De Francesco, the two biggest players from those uh, runner-up years of 94-95. Well, she was the top scorer last year in the grand final with 22 points, so they really need someone to fill those shoes. Uh, Trudy Hopgood caught one in the face there off a screen. She's staggering about a bit there, the number nine. Trying to get her equilibrium back. Cash O'Brien for three. Well, they didn't take any three-point shots in the first ten minutes, but they're taking plenty now, Melbourne. They're being forced out by this Adelaide defence. Moffa back to Hopgood for two. Oh, look at that! Straight as an it arrow. It certainly was. It was very flat, but it was uh, direct enough to slide straight into the hoop. Well, she scored seven quick points, Trudy Hopgood. Perfect from the field. Ray Tomlinson, you heard him call his second last time out of the half with Melbourne down by six points. And it's not a lot of points. Six points is nothing. I mean, really, the way that Melbourne can shoot the threes, it's only two times down the floor. You've got, yeah, but they've you've, really got a tough got, um, job on defence, and it sounds to me like Ray may turn to a man-to-man -man just for a few minutes. McConnell there, number 10, has uh, hit a three-pointer, while Adelaide have scored 11 points. With our offence, with our offence, let's run a few, a few greens, a few greens, I want to run this because we've got to get it inside. But for goodness sake, let's screen people. That's directed mainly at you. That's like when we run powers. We've got to screen people, hit them, set people up and help yourself. Don't forget the second screen though, OK? Let's go, guys. Well, we're now talking finger talk as well as colours, so I'm, I know I'm the expert commentator, Peter, but I really <laughs> am not quite sure. We'll have to see what green is. I'm pretty sure I uh, overheard Ray Tomlinson say he's going to pick up the players man-to-man. -man. be interesting to see how they match up. Though with Copley out on the court and Moffat, they're not quite as tall as Brogan and Boyd, so they may match up just a little better. Meanwhile, Tigers are in offence, and we'll see what Green is. Ten seconds to go on this offence. Well, they certainly Birch need needs some help. Good decision. Comes up. Empty handed from about four metres. Hogg pushes it down the floor to Copley. Tanya Dew seeing court time for the first time. She's uh, replaced Hopgood. Moffa misses. Rebound from O'Brien. They're doing pretty well on the boards, Melbourne. Oh, good. Well caught by Birch. Just couldn't finish off. 
Just needed to get a balance a little bit. Tigers have certainly had their opportunity. That's a charge. No. Oh. Oh, I thought she had good position, Harrower. Uh, I think Rachel Spawn uh, is having a bit of a laugh there too. I don't know whether she perhaps thought she was going to get pinged for the charge. Christy Harrow has got two fouls. Spawn, her second trip to the line, maybe a bit of a lucky one. This is going to be poetic justice for Melbourne. She misses both. Now Rachel's got to follow through with a shot here. That one went in. She still didn't follow through all that well, but it went in that time. Seven points in front, the Adelaide Lightning. That was the margin between these two teams in the last two grand finals. O'Brien didn't get the roll. Unlucky for Burge. No. The foul's going to be caught on Jay Kingy. The expression on her face is a dead set giveaway. <laughs> Well, I thought uh, Burge had jumped to get the rebound and the ball stayed on the ring and then she continued into the back of Kingy, I thought. And that was... Unless Kingy was holding her down, I, it, I don't know. It was a little bit too uh, busy under there for us to see. We're not going to pick it up Now the stack from the inbounds here to O'Brien. No shot away. Spawn. Got all ball. Oh, oh, Burge has got it down. That's right, it was uh, a second thought for a shot, but it went, a bank shot went in and she'll go to the line for the three-point play. So a bonus free throw coming up for Hella Burge. The foul on Spawn, her second. Close the gap to five, could be four. And it is, 25 plays 21. Spawn has just three points for Adelaide. And that will please Ray Tomlinson no end. But uh, there she is getting her fifth. No. Tanya Dew the rebound. That won't please Tomlinson. Five minutes to go in the first half. Copley to Spawn. Burge too tall. Good Locked hands. it on to Spawn. Heather Burge is having a bit of an impact out there. Big girl in the middle and quite mobile. Some instruction from the bench. See Cheryl Chambers taking up the point guard position. Wilson to O'Brien. Burge, can they get the lob into her? She's got the uh, strength and height advantage against Spawn. Now the foul on Tanya Dew as McConnell goes in and then out. Well, we see that hand checking foul. We've seen it right from the word go. WNBL season, referees uh, are picking up the hand checking, and that's certainly what happened in that instance. Narelle McConnell to shoot the free throws with uh, Adelaide in the penalty situation, team fouls wise, as Copley sits down for Boyd. 80% free throw shooter is McConnell. Both teams not helping themselves from the line in this game. The lucky roll this time. Never looked like going in. Kelly laments back on the court. Made a couple of errors when she was out there early and Ray Tomlinson took her off and had a chat to her. So hopefully she's ready to play now. Placing McConnell. Melbourne have scored the last four points to get back within three. Brogan around Burge. Nice move from Michelle Brogan. A beautiful big step. Four points for Brogan, who's had a uh, good rest in this first half. Emma Wilson now carrying the ball for Melbourne. Lamez. Score. Not a good angle for the pass from Wilson. It should have been taken down a little lower and passed into Birch. Good cutting from Rachel Spawn. And it doesn't want to drop. She's not having a good shoot. Oh, game. Kingy knocked it out of Lamez's hand straight to Boy, who stuck it back in. <laughs> <laughs> June nearly getting it away from Burge there. On the baseline, Emma Wilson, Chambers for three. Yes. Oh, and it's down. It's worked for them every time they've gone inside and then back for the three. They've hit three three-pointers, Melbourne. And back within four points, there's a travel. 
We've seen, I think, about three or four travels called from the top of the key there from for the Adelaide Lightning team. Thompson really working his bench. Guy Rees back in for Burge and uh, McConnell for Wilson. Well, Guy Reese is going to have to step up into Heather Burge's shoes because she did a good job while she was out there. We need a bit of help for the Tigers here. The determined Chambers. Need to get it over the halfway line. O'Brien, oh, a little bit sloppy there. Boyd takes it away. They're back in numbers, though, Melbourne. Where's the cavalry from Adelaide? They didn't run the floor for that fell. They were no, still very back sloppy. in defence. Brogan, the give and go with Dew. Swing it, the call from the Adelaide team. Kingy left alone, up high. Just two seconds on the shot clock, Brogan. And Chambers with the rebound. Melbourne can get with him too. Oh, offensive foul called that time. The two 11s coming together. And Chambers comes off the worst for it with a third foul. Let's have a look at this one again. There she was set. She actually pulled up at the same time as they connected, but it was certainly a charge foul. It was a good, good position from Carla Boyd, right on that centre line. Two and a half minutes to go. A lot of talk from both teams. Jay Kingy takes a first three-pointer. Or, in fact, a second. She's made both, hasn't she? Yes, that's a second three-point shot. Good offence that time from Adelaide. They were certainly cutting through the keyway a lot more aggressive. Guy Reese a long way from the hoop. Adelaide back to that seven-point lead. Dew going all the way with Chambers. The defence from the Adelaide youngster. Now it's a uh, three on two break. Good hands there from McConnell, taking it away from Brogan. But Adelaide in possession with 25 seconds on the shot clock. No one at the three point line. Last 90 seconds are important for Melbourne here to limit the damage going into the break. 10 seconds on the shot clock now. Can you do just inside the three-point line? Sweet. The biggest lead of the game. Enjoyed by the Lightning. Nine points. Coming out of half time. A review of last week's action in the WNBL. And Sally Crow from the Dandenong Rangers is our player in profile this week. Chambers for three. Reese couldn't hang on to it. Good ball control from Kingy. She's got Dew on her left. Pulls up. With 46 seconds on the shot clock, O'Brien brings it down. The game clock, rather. And Melbourne will want to make the most of this. And set up for one good shot. And I would think they would be hoping for a three-point play. Or oh, a three-point shot, I should say. They've got plenty of shooters out there. Chambers hanging back. Who's going to drive it in and kick it back to her? McConnell. Well, she's got, got rid of Kingy. Here. Here's Chambers for three. That's good. Oh, Ooh, and good from this angle. <laughs> <laughs> One shot left. Not call the Adelaide fan behind me. <laughs> but they've got all the time left here. To do it again or a clear out for somebody? Chambers having to do all the work. She goes again, it's O'Brien, shoot it, not Too in time. Long. And she's had a very quiet first half, Natasha O'Brien. Well, they found it very hard to penetrate in the last five minutes there. Melbourne after they'd uh, cut a seven point deficit back to four. And now Adelaide with the biggest lead of the game, nine points as they go in at the break. They're looking to be in control, Melbourne a lot of hard work in front of them to wrest back the lead. Well, let's uh, review the round eight action now in the Women's National Basketball League Coast to Coast Cup. The Adelaide Lightning got back on the winning list at home, but not without an early struggle with the AIS. 
The final winning margin was 17 points, with Lightning captain Rachel Spawn the most valuable player. Led by a 33-point MVP effort from Alison Cook, the Dandenong Rangers made a couple of runs at the Brisbane Blazers, but were never able to rest the lead. Brisbane won the possible finals preview by five points. With plenty of swapping of personnel between the two clubs during the off-season, the Melbourne Tigers' Bulleen Boomers game at the Tennis Centre was always going to be a spirited, hard-fought affair. In fact, there was never more than four points between the teams, with strong defence limiting scoring opportunities at both ends of the court. Melbourne took a one-point lead into the second half, where Natasha O'Brien became the focal point in attack. But anything she could do, Debbie Slimmon could counter for Bulleen. Heather Burge was the one player in the Melbourne lineup with the physical size to match it with Slimmon. And in one 90-second period, the American import scored five points on the Bulleen powerhouse to give her team back the lead. Burge was playing on four fouls, however, and just 10 seconds later, a soft-looking foul call ended her game and turned the match Bulleen's way. One look at Melbourne coach Ray Tomlinson told you just how crucial Burge's loss would be. With the Tigers in team foul trouble, Slimmon then scored four consecutive points from the line to open up a three-point Bulleen break. Melbourne compounded its problems by shooting at just 47% from the stripe. The respective point guards, Christy Harrower and Michelle Chandler, played the entire game on each other. And when Chandler brilliantly stripped her former Melbourne teammate to set Kate Cohen free, the Boomers had the game in the bag. Former Boomer Cheryl Chambers hit a three for the Tigers on the buzzer, but it was too late. What Laurie Chiswick's team had done was consolidate their place in the top three, with the final two-point winning margin representing Bulleen's first victory over the Tigers in nearly three years. Co-captain Debbie Slimmon was MVP. At the Sydney Entertainment Centre, the Flames led all match against the Perth Breakers. Trish Fallon scored seven quick points for Sydney, which was decisive in the context of what was a tight, low-scoring half. The Breakers found it nearly impossible to penetrate the Flames' defence, and if not for Lisa McLean's long-range efforts, Perth would have been totally out of it by the break. Like McLean, Shelley Sandy was in double figures by half-time, as Sydney led by 11 points. Things opened up offensively after the break, especially for the Flames' Michelle Timms. On the back of her 67% three-point shooting, Sydney was well on the way to improving on its biggest ever winning margin over Perth of 27 points. A 19-2 run from the Flames put the game well out of the breakers' reach, but to their credit, they refused to allow a total blowout. With McLean kept to just one second-half field goal and starting point guard Tully Bevilacqua to just two points for the game, promising teenager Narelle Henry stepped up for Perth. The second year breaker has finished strongly in a number of games this season, and with a career best 12 points against Sydney, all teams will want to pay her close attention, especially beyond the three point line, where she scored nine of those points last Saturday. Even so, the fears of a second half flame out from Sydney seem to be dimming for coach Carrie Graff, as she gave her bench good minutes against Perth. Annie Lafleur showing some of her old spark with 10 points after half time. 22 points was the final margin, which was coincidentally the individual points tally for game MVP Sydney's Michelle Timms. She did it again the following day in Canberra, as the Flames took over top spot on the ladder by cruising to a 24 point win over the Australian Institute of Sport. Across town at Belconnen, the Perth Breakers showed no ill effects from the loss to Sydney as they accounted for fellow top five aspirants, the Canberra Capitals, by 12 points. Joint Perth top scorer Gina Stevens was MVP. The weekend's top scorer was easily Dandenong's Alison Cook, with a league season topping 33 points against Brisbane. Blazer teammates Sophie Van Selden and Sandy Brondello, back from her shoulder injury, scored 23 in the same game, to be equal with Debbie Slimmon and one in front of Michelle Timms. 
Brisbane's Jenny Whittle is just one point in front of Adelaide's Rachel Spawn in the very close race to be the season's top scorer. Debbie Simmon was the weekend's top single game rebounder, with Marianne DeFrancesco and Lucille Hamilton also grabbing double figures. Jenny Whittle collected nine, along with Karen Dalton, to maintain her lead as the season's top rebounder. Whittle is 25 boards up on Bulleen Slimmon, with Fiona Robinson and Michelle Brogan a further two back. The lucky winner of last week's competition was Denise True from Southlake in Western Australia. Clever Denise knew that Sydney beat Perth by one point in the 1993 WNBL Grand Final. This week we want to know what was the winning margin in the last two Coast to Coast Cup deciders. Did Adelaide beat Melbourne in both games by five points? 00556027. Seven points. 00556028. Or nine points. 00556029. To be in the running to win the WNBL ABC Sport goodies pack, you must ring the number you think corresponds to the correct answer by midnight this coming Wednesday. To this week's profile subject, Dandenong Rangers point guard Sally Crow. A member of the Australian Opal squad last year, the sky was the limit for this 23-year-old until a cruel knee injury ended her 1995 WNBL season just five games in. But she's back in 96, fully recovered and optimistic for the future. I guess it was, uh, especially after I hurt my knee, it was really disheartening um, to have such a serious injury occur. And I was sort of on a bit of a high. I just got back from college in America and had a really successful tour over there or stint in America. And I was looking forward to coming back and playing some good basketball again. And so five games into the season. but. Um, yeah, I worked really, really hard in the off-season and I've just taken my time. It's been like nine months or something it was before I even stepped on the court and played my first game. So getting back into it and enjoying it again, it's good. You are in the Opal squad and then to have it come crashing down like that, um, how did you make yourself stay away from for that long when you know that, you know, Atlanta was there if you could stay healthy, I guess? Yeah, it was it was pretty disappointing actually when they announced the team here on a, during the pre-season tournament. I had a bit of a tear actually. I was it, I didn't think I'd be that disappointed, but that was a big thing to, to miss out on something like that. Uh, but now I'm just really focusing. We've got a great group of people here together at Dandenong now, so I'm just trying to put all my efforts into to getting that team to become successful. Looking back so far, what, you're 23? I mean, uh, what's been the highlight for you so far? I definitely have to say the gold medal with the junior team. That was just such a fantastic group of people and, and we're all still the best of friends. And so that was a big highlight and, you know, no one's won a gold medal for Australia so far. So um, hopefully the Opals will be able to come back with one, but it's still, yeah, that's something that's always going to be special in my mind for sure. How do you characterise that team that you played with in Korea? Australian still working the ball. It's, it's hard to. Well. It just We just got better and better and I guess we were such a close group off the court that that just made everything on the court happen so so easily for us. It, yeah, it feels like a bit of a dream team. It's a once in a lifetime thing. But um, yeah, so maybe we'll all get together again in 2000 or 2004, something like that. We might all get back together. So that'd be great. Good to hear that the uh, Opal's gleam hasn't uh, died in the eye of uh, Sally Crow. And she's having a good game this, uh, well, good season for the Dandenong Rangers and uh, playing a part in them being in the top five. But uh, Adelaide Lightning, they look in control, Leanne Grantham, of this game after Melbourne went with them for the first ten minutes of that half as we see the Adelaide Lightning number one ticket holder on the left, Marjorie Jackson Nelson. Well, uh, She's involved with the team this year. Just talking to Jenny Cheeseman, Australian assistant coach. And, and that's the chair for the Adelaide Lightning. And uh, I'm sure that uh, she's getting some hot tips there from Jenny Cheeseman. I was speaking to Jenny at half time actually, and she's pretty excited about going to Atlanta. She's here scouting the Opals representatives, seeing how they're performing. <laughs> Well, what can uh, Melbourne do here? They've only got five scorers up until half time. And uh, Carol and McConnell have six apiece. Chambers, the top score, was seven. O'Brien, just three. I think she's really got to uh, somehow find a way to get into this game offensively. Number five for Melbourne, if they are to be a chance. Kingy 
shadowing her every move. Oh, oh good, good hands from Kingy. And it falls to Harrower. 10 seconds on the shot clock. 19 and a half minutes to go in the game. Melbourne have just got a chip away. O'Brien launches three. Big board from Brogan, who's been supreme on the defensive glass this season. Equal third in the league in uh, rebounds per game. At uh, eight in total, five and a half defensive. We see Melbourne Tigers back in the zone. Match-up zone, a lot of talk needed in the match-up zone. Hill only got one point in the first half. Just coming up short there. Harrow making sure she didn't step out of court. Who will score the first points of the half? We're already 70 seconds in. No addition to the halftime score. 34-25 in favour of the Adelaide Lightning. Very static at the moment at Melbourne. Harrow, can she thread away through three? Four seconds on the shot clock. McConnell must shoot it. Totally unaware of the shot clock there was Narelle McConnell. Yeah, there's a lot more talk from her teammates. Um, I didn't even hear the Melbourne Tigers bench get up and, and yell out. Of course, there's no 10 second buzzer anymore in the WNBL or the NBL. That hurts. They work very, very hard, Melbourne Tigers, in defence, and they had an opportunity to peg back another two points, and they really blew it. Spawn has made some good cuts and has been ignored so far by her teammates. Hill with seven seconds on the shot clock. Lemez had a bit of a hand in, but uh, she got herself clear enough, Jay Kingy, to score the first points of the second half. Kingy has nine to be second top scorer in the game. Three-pointer again, not going down for Melbourne. Harrower, that's another foul, and uh, she now has two or three. I think that's her third. In fact, it's her fourth foul, so that's a real concern to Ray Tomlinson. Christy Harrow is a smart player. I think she can stay out there and play on four fouls. Carla Boyd, she is the top scorer in the game with 10. Spawn, good step around Burge there, and Rachel Spawn, who was kept to just uh, three in the first half. They'll be very lucky if they can keep it a three in the second, Melbourne. Nice basket from Harrower. This Melbourne Tigers team have really got to step up because Adelaide have come out here running, running hot, and the last thing they need to do is to allow Adelaide to get a real big lead. Double figures, 11 at the moment. Liz had a hand on it again. Brogan uh, back in for the rebound after Boyd misses. And that hurts when you play really good defence like that and somebody grabs a rebound. Really got to be boxing out hard in, when you're playing a zone. And they matched it with Adelaide on the glass for the first uh, part of the first half. But now it's a eight-point advantage in rebounds to Adelaide. Three and a half minutes played in the second half. Points hard to come by at the moment, especially for the team in red. Kelly Lemez for her first points in the game. Good offense from Melbourne Tigers. I think that was that special play that Ray was talking about in a timeout we saw in the first half. Oh, almost a wild pass from Hill. Boy, handed it with control and ease. Kept alive by, by um, Rachel Spawn, almost in the back though of Heather Burge. Four minutes gone in the second half. Four points apiece so far in those four minutes. Make it six for Adelaide. Rachel Spawn has already topped her first half effort in four minutes. Seven points for Spawn and seven rebounds. It's a blocking and Hill foul. A blocking foul. Trying to stop Narelle McConnell from cutting through the keyway. Grand final last year was a low scoring affair. 52 
43, yeah. was it? Yeah. It's well done, it was. <laughs> and the uh, 94 grand final would have been low scoring, but for double overtime. As that's better from Natasha O'Brien, the wheel and deal along the baseline. She was pretty quiet in the first half, maybe a few nerves coming home back to Adelaide. There'll be a few people in the crowd that know Natasha well, her family live here, up against her old teammates. Now, Burge. Certainly made sure that Spawn wasn't going to get the shot off. She'll have to earn them at the stripe. Cheryl Chambers about to come in for Melbourne. You see the big hand, Heather Burge, come down right across Rachel Spawn. Adelaide shot at 50% from the line in the first half. Melbourne a little better. Four of seven free throw shooting from the Tigers. Rachel Spawn's only made one free throw so far in five attempts. I don't know if Jenny Cheeseman's making note of that because certainly She's the got Opals a, won't want to do this in Atlanta. Had with her though, the Australian <laughs> uh, assistant coach. Sitting there with Marg Rolston, the chair of the Adelaide Lightning. And uh, Nelson, Marjorie uh, Jackson Nelson, of course, Australia's first female gold medalist at the Olympic Games in Helsinki. The number one ticket holder there in the glasses. And she'd be pretty happy with the situation there. O'Brien, that's a very confident baseline move. Rejected by Boyd, though. Good fighting by both teams. We heard uh, Joe Hill at the beginning of the game saying she likes to dive on the ball. She just showed us a sample of that. It wasn't a 360 double twist or anything. Well, actually, you're giving us a sneak preview of uh, next week's profile piece, which will be on Joe Hill. Oh, OK, seven, quite right. <laughs> who is uh, another one of those World Junior Championship gold medalists of 93, who, of course, has their eyes set on their senior Opal lineup. She came so close to getting to the Atlanta team. She's the, the 13th woman, I guess, as far as the Opals are concerned, but they can only take 12. Brogan is uh, in that team. As she goes to Hill, she too takes the big steps along the baseline. Adelaide maintaining that 11-point advantage. That time the foul's on Spawn. Good battle between Burge and Spawn here in the uh, respective centre positions. Neither of them uh, outstanding in the shooting just at the moment, but certainly tough on defence, both of them. Rogan, there we go. Chambers a look at the basket there. Nice balanced shot there. Just must have been touched by the defence. Calling for the foul. That's two on one here in favour of Adelaide. But they get back very well, Melbourne. Spawn from the foul line. Shoot them from anywhere but there, Rachel. Yes, that stripe seems to have something <laughs> in for her, doesn't it? Jan Sterling and Dean Kingsman looking on. <laughs> Nicole Guy Reese, number 13 for Melbourne Tigers, on the floor for Natasha O'Brien. Melbourne shooting at uh, about 33% from the field. Adelaide uh, at uh, about 46, 47. So neither team sparkling, are no, they? No, neither shooting. team sparkling, certainly. And Melbourne Tigers are only averaging 37% for the season, which is really not high enough. Burge. Around spawn. Give her half a look at the basket because she'll go to it. And they certainly need to play with uh, plenty of confidence in their own ability, Melbourne, if they are to get this game back. Well, we've certainly seen Melbourne Tigers peg teams black back. Classic was last year against Sydney. Hopgood keeps it alive to the delight of the Adelaide fans. Simpson. Alan Court now guarding Kingy. Ray Tomlinson, very animated. He's almost out on the court. It's good defensive work here from his Tiger lineup. Kingy pulls up and makes them. She's had a very class act game, Jay Kingy. She's stepped up, and I think that she'll also. She's got 10 points for the game in double figures, and I think we'll see her vying for a position in that uh, 98 World Championship team. That 
we heard Sally Crow talk about too. There she is intercepting the pass to Harrow. Oh, oh, he came off a of foot. The crossover dribble didn't quite happen. Penetrate is the call for Ray Tomlinson. You might have seen in those highlights from the game against Bulleen last week. Just how animated he was up on the bench. Uh, well, never on the bench, in fact. Down goes uh, Hill. She tangled with Burge. Defensive rebound, an important one there from Spawn. Hill's there to back up. Oops, down Stepson goes down. Simpson. Simpson, sorry. Good board there from uh, Brogan, who's really pulling in the uh, offensive and defensive rebounds. In this second half, she's got six points for the game. Very quick, Christy Harrower. She blew past three or four there. And I think Christy Harrower is going to have to do a little bit more of that. She seems to be the player to go to. They've got to get a stop, Melbourne. Adelaide have been able to maintain that 11-point lead from early in the half. Kingy can't extend it. If Hopgood went underneath. Chambers. Simpson, good ball movement from Melbourne, finding Burge. They ran the floor very well, well the Melbourne Tigers. It's not really the hallmark of their play, but they've done it in this game. Yes, they usually like to play the, the half-court game. Good defence from Simpson. It's going to be a turnover and a steal. Just waiting for the troops to get back down the floor. Well, fitness is going to be a, a factor in this game. Both teams have been uh, really running the floor for all their might so far in this half. Nine minutes played, Harrower launches a seven metre bomb. And everyone knows that Christy Harrow can certainly shoot those huge threes. Her and Michelle Timms, I think, have got them down pat. And a seven nothing run from the Melbourne Tigers has cut the lead from 11 down to six points. Tomlinson. A little more measured here. Sees his team. Have a chance. Adelaide. Calling the timeout. Make them make the play. a little bit more get a hand to it and then we've got to dive on the ball certainly they've done that in the last few minutes and only six points the difference now Christy Harrower has scored seven points in the half Tasha O'Brien got uh, one basket they need her or somebody to back up Harrower in fact it was a 13 point lead that uh, Melbourne have eaten into a few subs have been made. Cherie Hogg's on the floor, directing traffic for the Adelaide Lightning. Carla Boyd's back out there. Hopgood, a little bit hesitant here. Moffa makes a fine pass. Boy, oh, he doesn't get it to drop, but she will shoot two free throws. Again, the height differential there on the baseline. Moffa able to make that pass with confidence that Boyd would be able to outjump the defence and catch it. But Adelaide not capitalising, really. I mean, it was a shot that Carla Boyd would normally put in. Foul shooting has been atrocious. First point of the uh, half for Carla Boyd. Seven of 16 from Adelaide in the free throw shooting department. That's kept Melbourne in the game. New 30 seconds for the Tigers. Still plenty of time for them to cause this upset, which Cheryl Chambers certainly thought was in the air before the game, and I had to agree with that. Thought Melbourne were ever going to break that losing streak here at the powerhouse. It was today. Guy Reese, the wheel and deal on Moffa. <laughs> They're tangoing back there in the paint. 
10 minutes to go in the game here. Adelaide, of course, can't afford to, to drop this one. Sydney will start pulling away on top of the ladder if they do that. Very important for home forward advantage in the final series. Hopgood dumping it back to Moffat. Lovely shot from deep in the corner. First points of the game, I think, for Moffat, isn't it? Well, I think it is, but uh, they were very lucky Adelaide Lightning to get the shot off then. I think it was a bit of a four shot, even though it dropped in. First field goal anyway. She has three points. Marina Moffat. Simpson. Oh, a tough feet pass. into Guy Reese, and she couldn't hold it. Well, there are too many trees in there. A lot of feet and uh, nowhere really for the ball to go. I think she was better off going up for the tough shot herself. Ray Tomlinson dropping the head, not looking too happy about it at all. And Brian's going to come into the game for Simpson. Good defence from Lamez. Harrower. Adelaide goes back to defence and stop her push. Another opportunity from Melbourne Tigers gone missing. And Adelaide can take it back to a double figure lead now. A lot more talk needed from Melbourne Tigers. The cut in the keyway was far too easy. Good rebound from Guy Reese. Eight and a half minutes to go. Excellent ball control. Simpson for three. And it's down. They need more like that. Mickey Simpson's first uh, points of the game. They've made five three-pointers, the Melbourne Tigers, to Adelaide's two. But Melbourne have taken 14 attempts to Adelaide's five. Six points the difference. Carla Boyd, too strong for Simpson. Just brushed her out of the way. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Copley gets around Guy Reese. Oh, nice shot again from that left corner. Debbie Copley scoring her first basket. Good Kelly drive Lamez. from Lamez. Right around Copley. No help out defence, so I went for the basket. She was fortunate to drop for a good drive. Starting to open up a little bit offensively now at both ends. Yes, well, that'd be a little, need bit, a, stop. a little bit of fatigue setting in on defence for both teams. Haven't been able to get closer than six points in this half. Melbourne, Cherie Hogg. And all the rebounding from Adelaide. Moffer unselfishly gives it to Boyd. Yes, probably should have taken the shot, I think, Marina Moffer. Debbie Copley for three. And they can't afford to leave her alone. Certainly can't. She's an excellent outside shooter. She's got a beautiful action. It's good to see her back in the team. She's worked very hard. Big knee problems. Two-pointer, that was. Foot just cutting the line. So the difference is eight points. Beautiful move. It's Christy Harrower that is going to do it for Absolutely. Melbourne. I don't know why it's not the Christy Harrower show because really she's obviously uh, feeling pretty confident. She's handling the ball well. Melbourne think they've finally got a call as uh, Boyd didn't exactly brush past Simpson there. She just shoved her out of the way. Well, if uh, Melbourne Tigers take advantage of this, just, oh, just holding off. Nikki Simpson just pushing her out of the way. <laughs> a little smaller and a little lighter. I guess it was easy enough for Carla Boyd to do. Would bring it back to four points. If Melbourne Tigers convert on this time down the floor. Good flare from Simpson. Oh, well picked up by O'Brien. Kept alive. Well nabbed by McConnell. Under extreme pressure, Adelaide. Not giving a single easy possession to the Tigers. Six minutes to go. They've got to make a run at Adelaide here. Is Harrow going to have to do it all? Burge with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Works hard against Copley who didn't give ground. Almost a turnover again for Adelaide. Five and a half minutes to go. Adelaide, going to be doing it in their stride at the moment. 
Copley missing that time. Boyd fighting hard in the air and on the ground. There's a foul. No, it's a jump. Thought Moffat got in right over the shoulder there of... Uh, it's Harold. <laughs> I'd have to agree. I, I thought there was going to be a foul called on Moffat from, from going over the shoulder of Chrissy Harrow, but he may pick it up here a little bit more. A lot of hands in there. Christy Harrow gets the ball here. Keeps it in court, which was well done. Uh, I think there was a little bit of uh, contact there from Marina Moffa. Probably unfortunate for Harrow. And a uh, big smile on the face of Christy Harrow. <laughs> Will Marina even have to jump here? Oh, shrugs it's McConnell. There's Boyd open. Brogan, the third shot opportunity goes. Moffa. Just too tall, too many guns in Adelaide for Melbourne. Harrower. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Well, it is drying up well and truly for the Tigers now. Yes, they need a stop here. There's only four and a half minutes left in the game. They need to have a stop. Hogg pick up the rebound from the Tigers, but kept alive, and it's Adelaide Lightning ball again. Now a 14-point advantage on the boards for Adelaide. Simpson harassing Dew. Forced the bad pass. Fouled Dew, I think, was it? Getting... Uh, O'Brien around the leg. Only 14 fouls on the Lightning. Melbourne, only three in this half. Well, they got their stop. But they've got a score, they and they Harrow's the need... only one that's looked like doing it. Exactly, they need to convert here. Great bounce pass. Oh, not hung on to by Heather Burge. Was a tough pass, but uh, it was certainly there. Good stop from Burge, picked up by O'Brien. O'Brien must take it in. Well, she banks it in instead. And the turnover from Adelaide. Well, certainly Melbourne Tigers have an opportunity here. Timeout called by Adelaide. I don't think Jan, Jan Sterling would be all that impressed with the Adelaide game. It's been a little bit sloppy today. They really do struggle against Melbourne Tigers zone. I think he's checking the timeouts, is he? That's the second. Just a lack of concentration. Jan Sterling. Too casually out there. Don't, you know, if they're right up in your face, you can put the ball to the floor, you go by, and then you distribute. Offense is concerned about the ball not going into the high post when the high post is open. It opens up the offense so much more if you're playing against a zone. If you can get the ball into the high post, if the centre doesn't come to you, you've got a shot. If they do come to you, it's usually the baseline area that's wide open or the 45 player. Well, when you look at the uh, points tallies for Adelaide, just two players in double figures, Kingy and Boyd, spawn just seven. Melbourne. Given them that before the game would have well and truly taken it. They've got to execute themselves. First, uh, O'Brien, then Burge misses. No jump ball. Very quick jump ball. Actually, I think the ball was loose after the before the whistle even blew. Now it's Tanya Dew's turn to smile. <laughs> She's giving away <laughs> the centimetres. 15 to be exact. Simpson. The long range two. Well, no one came to her. A good decision by Nikki Simpson. They're back within four. The closest they've been all half. And a turnover. It could be two. It's a two on one break. Simpson goes the whole way. Tough play by Nikki Simpson. She's good. made the last four points, and now it's just one basket the difference. Will panic stations set in here for Adelaide? 
Ray Tomlinson also almost making its six Melbourne Tigers out on the court there. <laughs> Well, I think he's seen this happen here at the Clipsal Powerhouse a number of times. And of course, one last year in the grand final. So, a wild pass. I think uh, Natasha O'Brien cut the vision of Marina Moffa receiving that pass from Rachel Spawn, and the ball went straight out of court. Well, who would have thought it? Only moments ago, they seem to be effortlessly holding that double figure lead, Adelaide. And Melbourne have scored the last six points. Burge, tough left-hand shot. She makes it and scores a level. Almost another turnover. I think that we'll see Jay Kingy come back on the floor very quickly. She seemed to uh, turn over again. That was McConnell knocking it out of Moffa's hands. Three turnovers on their last three trips down the floor, the Adelaide Lightning. Brogan about to come back into the game. Two minutes to go. It's going to be a nail-biter. Burge. And Holt gets the rebound. And I think this crowd has to step up a little oh, bit for Adelaide. What a pass from Borky. From half court, she hit Spawn at full pace. And that should lift the Adelaide Lightning crowd a little bit. That broke a 9 nothing run. Smart play needed from Melbourne Tigers each time down the floor. Simpson for three to give them the lead back. Well played, Rachel Spawn. Just didn't flick it back into court. She saw Moffa, gave it straight to her. Burge makes the interception. Got down well, the 195 centimetre centre. She's done a great job tonight for Tigers. Well, for the second game in the row, Melbourne have the chance. Within two points as they were against Bulleen. They've got to look after the ball. Both teams very sloppy oh, in offense. O'Brien very tired too. She nearly collapsed there. I think Eight seconds on the shot clock. Foul on Hogg. Melbourne possession from the side with... Uh, how many seconds on the shot clock? She didn't get it away, did she? They put 30 seconds up. They've got a new 30 they seconds. They have got a new 30 seconds. Unless it came off her foot, I didn't see. Melbourne aren't arguing. Spawn foul. 16 fouls now on the light. Four fouls on Rachel Spawn. She's got nine points in the game. There is a query at the bench. About the timeouts. Now, Ray Tomlinson calls a timeout. Well, I have it that uh, Adelaide have called both their timeouts. 55 and a half seconds to go in the game. Melbourne have never led it. They were down by as much as 13. Throw it out, get it back. Go inside-outside game, not a problem. Still access, okay? Girls, you here. Remember, you've got fouls to play, so we can get up some fouls here. Good job, Nick. Come on, we want to get Let's up. Go, go. Yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got um, three, three teams now, so we want to extend it, but we don't want to see any rush penetration. You can't oh, foul out. Greg Thomason wants to see an inside-outside play, saying to Heather Burge, the ball's going to come into you, then I want to kick back out. I'm sure that they're looking for good offence here. They need to hit a, a basket because uh, Adelaide will end up with the ball being two up and uh, probably or possibly only 30 seconds left, left on the time. So they really have to make it count, Melbourne Tigers. Well, Tigers really playing for their season. If they uh, lose another one, you think they can just about kiss the finals goodbye down there in eighth position on the table. Can they upset the reigning premiers? The team that has beaten them in the last two grand finals. Simpson with confidence, driving in on Hogg. Oh, she has come up Nikki. big in the last three or four minutes. She Six points. She has. Great confidence from Nikki Simpson. Carla Boy, <laughs> she's had a great battle with Simpson. <laughs> we could be seeing overtime. The crowd getting behind the Adelaide team. Who will it? B that takes the final They're shot. They're not panicking. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. It's Burge who fouls, stops Brogan. 
They would have been happy if it had been any other player but Michelle Brogan, given her free throw shooting potential. But a pretty good foul, I think. Just the second on Oh, absolutely. She acknowledges the foul straight away. She made sure the ball didn't go near the hole. Now, while the free throws are being taken, Jan Sterling talking to her guards, Hogg and Kingy, as Brogan gives the team back the lead. She's cool as a cucumber. I Seen her so many times in this situation. Knocked them both down. Not this time, though. Oh, well, scrapped by Brian. Has to and be a foul. And out of the game. Yes, it certainly had to be a foul. Was good hustle by Rachel Spawn, but certainly a push in the back there from Spawn. That's the seventh team foul on the Lightning. And Rachel Spawn sits down. The Adelaide captain with uh, nine points in the game, ten rebounds. Melbourne did a good job on her. 21.8 seconds left on the clock. Melbourne in possession can win the game. And I think we may see a little bit of wheeling and dealing by Harrower. I think she's probably the confidence player, apart from Nikki Simpson. A bit of a delay here. Well, it's, five uh, team, five fouls. So yes, Moffat the coach has in. some time, Jan Sterling, to talk to Marina Moffat before she comes on the court. No turnover needed by Tigers right here. They found Harrower. It's going to be a clear out play, I would think, for Harrower. Well, she drove in last week, and the great steal from Chandler saw Bulleen steal the game away. O'Brien, with oh, two seconds on the clock, gives it straight to Hogg. They must foul here. And they had their, They certainly had their chances, Melbourne Tigers. Natasha O'Brien threw the ball away in the last second of play and she won't be real happy with herself. Outstanding game by Melbourne Tigers. A typical comeback by Melbourne Tigers. We're used to seeing that happen. Adelaide Lightning defeating the Melbourne Tigers 58-57. A big comeback by Melbourne. 13 points down at, at one stage. I don't think Melbourne Tigers would be all that happy with their game. A little bit sloppy in patches. Tanya Jew and Heather Burge. Heather Burge, number seven for the Melbourne Tigers, had a very, very good game. She's come back from the States after a couple of weeks over there. Spawn a bit quiet, only nine points. Signing some autographs. Of course, the Opals go into their last camp before they head to Atlanta, and Rachel Spawn will be one of those players. Other West Coast WNBL games are being in action tonight. The AIS versus Tassie. Of course, at 8 o'clock at the AIS training hall tonight. Get along and see that, all those people in Canberra. Underway at the moment, Sydney up against Brisbane. That commenced at 6pm at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. And Bulleen versus Perth at 8pm at Mill Park. And tomorrow, we see Canberra up against Brisbane at 2.15 at Bell Collins Stadium. And the Dandenong Rangers up against Melbourne at 2 o'clock at the Dandenong Stadium. So everyone in Melbourne, get down and see the Dandenong Rangers up against Melbourne. That'll be another battle for the Melbourne Tigers after tonight's effort. We'll have to come up against the Dandenong Rangers tomorrow. <laughs> Peter G is going to have a chat to Carla Boyd, MVP for today's game. Thanks very much, uh, Leanne. Carla, how did you manage to pull that one out of the fire? How did you let yourselves get into that situation? Uh, I think we managed to pull that out with sheer luck in the end. Um, what we were trying to do at the end was we knew Christy would be going one-on-one -on -one and it just happened to be that I got stuck on her. So, um, no, we're trying to force her right and try not to let her penetrate and dish, which she's been doing the whole game. But, you know, obviously we were up a fair bit. And, you know, our turnovers are a major thing. We've got to get them down and that's what Jan's trying to work on with us. And tonight we're trying to tr keep it to 12 turnovers, which... Uh, and you I didn't. Far off you didn't. That. In the last five minutes, I think we got 12 turnovers. So, yeah, you know, I think there's something we've got to work at. Are you just rusty all round this season, or, you know, you seem to start off okay, but uh, things have been just sort of clogging up for you lately? Yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with, um, you know, Michelle and Rachel and myself being away, and, and when we do come back, we don't really have too many sessions together, and 
obviously, you know, in the Australian team, we've got a running game, and, and here with the Lightning, we want to have the same thing, but it just doesn't seem to be working, and, you know, the turnovers seem to be happening in that case. Is that uh, to be expected, given your run of success, that you're going to have these periods when things don't go so well? Um, it's, you know, it's obviously expected in the game, but not for, uh, you know, we've had a few bad games in the last three or four weeks. We've had bad games, and, you know, there's something that we've got to work at if we're going to make the finals. And, you know, obviously with us girls going to be away for one game against Berlin, and, you know, the other girls have got to step up and take, you know, take a stand and play well. Yeah, well, are the other teams now thinking, oh, maybe they're not unbeatable at the powerhouse? The 25-game winning streak ended by Sydney, and the the IAS gave you a run last week. Melbourne have very nearly done it here. Um, I don't know. It's something we don't think about is, <laughs> is the running streak here at the powerhouse. So obviously, it was all over the papers when we lost here against Sydney. And, and that's something that I don't think everyone goes in the game thinking that we've got to win at the powerhouse. Obviously, for our fans, we want to win. But, you know, sometimes it's just not possible. Now, uh, your game tonight, uh, top scorer for Adelaide. But, you know, Nikki Simpson there at the finish scored a few on you, didn't she? You were having a great battle, you two. Um, yeah, I sort of apologised to Nikki at the end there. I sort of got a bit worked up in the moment. And, and um, you know, obviously I got a bit told off too. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, she's a, she's a good player. So. Now, uh, just turning to... Uh your national team commitments. Uh, one more camp, is it, for the Opals? Yeah, our camp starts tomorrow in Sydney and it, um, finishes on Thursday. And then we've got, a, you know, two weeks back with our clubs and then we go and starting to get a bit nervous, actually. And you're taking a big deep breath there because, uh, well, the camps have been getting tougher. How's this one going to be? Uh, yeah, I can uh, I remember the camp, the last camp we had in Sydney, all of us were just so we were dead by the, after the first day, which is, you know, our camps are tough, but that was the toughest we've ever had and they've got harder as we go along. So so now this is going to prepare us for Atlanta. And uh, you go to Atlanta, what's the... Uh, well, you don't go straight to Atlanta, do you? No, we go to Toronto. We have a tournament there, and then we go to Chattanooga and have another tournament, and then we go into Atlanta. And you say, uh, personally, the, the nerves are building up. Uh, same for everybody, do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. The nerves are definitely building up with me. I'm trying not to think about it so the National League commitments can, can finish, but, you know, it's something that you just can't hold back, especially when it's my first Olympics. What do you think it's going to be like what do, when you get in the village? I don't know. I don't want to have too many expectations because I don't want to be let down on what it's like. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm not sure if you've heard, but it's something that I've always wanted to do my whole life. And, you know, to work up and then finally make the team, I don't want to have too many expectations just in case my whole life's been let down with that dream, yeah. Oh, I'm sure it won't be. Are you going to march in the opening ceremony? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK. I think too many athletes turn that chance down. Oh, something I'd never turn down. All right. Well, all the best for that, of course. And, uh, well, uh, don't drop your focus as far as Adelaide are concerned. I'm sure that's what Jan Sterling is going to be telling you after the game. Yeah, definitely. Well done today. Thank you. Carla Boyd for the Adelaide Lightning. Again, the Melbourne Tigers running them close. One point the difference here. Next week, our live action comes to you from the Sydney Entertainment Centre. And uh, welcome the Melbourne uh, Tigers upset the uh, top of the ladder flames. Look forward to your company next Saturday afternoon.